We're here with uh, Representative Shell Hughes of Alaska, participating in uh, NCSL's issue forum all about drones today. And we have a few questions. Um, Representative Hughes, uh, how did you first become aware of UAS technology? I became aware of it like most of us through news stories in the national media about the military's use of drones. And uh, which, by the way, um, the, the word drones has a very negative connotation. And I like to use the word unmanned aerial systems or unmanned aircraft because of uh, the, uh, the public's perception um, of the word drones. And, and I know NCSL used that word to, to get attention and get people to come to the session. And that was good because we need all 50 states to be paying attention. It's an emerging technology and it's important that states address it. So. Um, this year you introduced and uh, adopted a, a bill uh, or a resolution in Alaska. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what your legislation did? Sure. Um, I had a, a constituent, several constituents come to me concerned about the news stories they were hearing uh, regarding privacy. And so I began to look at it from that angle, looked at what other states were doing. But I also did research to understand what was happening around the globe in other countries. And, and what was happening in our state. And uh, we have been doing research and development since the 1990s and really ramped up this last decade, mm -hmm. our University of Alaska at Fairbanks. And in fact, we have completed more bona fide missions in our state than any other state. And with our vast land mass, we have a lot of good airspace and geogra geographic diversity and climatic differences vast coastline, miles of coastline, and 82% of our communities are off the road system, which means we're very dependent on aviation. And I, I believe we, we understand that. It's important to us, and if there's a new technology, we want to have an open door to that. Um, yet at the same time, recognize that there could be privacy issues, and there could be issues with the commercial industry having um, beginning to integrate with that and the safety concern. We have six times more pilots per capita than any other state. And even though it's a, a very large state, that means there are a lot of planes in the air. So the safety is something, um, of course, FAA, that's their, their focus. And so um, my bill, rather than be restrictive, like some of the bills across the country, it put the brakes on that and say, let's, let's be thoughtful about this. Let's um, see how we can um, not let the baby out with the bathwater on this one and harness the technology for good. And so it sets up a task force. It recognizes the work, work that our university has done, um, supports its effort to be one of the six test sites that the FAA will be selecting um, by the end of this year. And um, the task force is, is fairly small and has an end line. And it won't just be another study on the shelf because uh, it requires that the task force come forward with um, suggested legislation. So by January 1st, we'll have our first recommendations, and by July 1st of this next year, wrap that up. Um, we have a, a small group, Department of Military and Veterans Affairs representative at the state level, um, Department of Transportation, which is our Aviation Advisory Safety Board, and um, our uh, representative from the Public Safety a senator, a house member, and I'm forgetting one or two more. But it's it's a small, compact group. We'll take public input and um, hopefully craft something that will address the, the concerns but um, allow the industry w uh, with open arms into our state and be a model for the rest of the country. It's important that all 50 states really look carefully and don't react to the um, public opinion, which has been framed so much by the media, but really look at the industry itself and the good that, they, that this technology can bring. It can save lives. And um, we've had cases where we've been able to use unmanned air, aerial um, systems to um, go in inclement weather, where you wouldn't want to put a, a pilot in harm's way. Um, been able to find downed aircraft, um, guide an oil tanker to the city of Nome uh, for fuel. Um, we were able to keep sea lions off the endangered species list because of the of an unmanned aerial system be able able to get an accurate count through the photography, and so it's important that as the various states look at the bills that they have out there or consider drafting them, 
that they really stop and think that, that they're not restricting the industry um, in our country and also in their own states. It could be a huge economic driver. So, After participating in the panel, do you have any remaining questions concerning U.S. technology? Well, I, I do. I, the sense and avoid, you know, with a man pilot, the, you know, the human can see and avoid if, if something's not coming up from uh, on his screen or from air traffic control. Um, with unmanned, of course, you don't have the, those human eyes, and so there's work on sense and avoid technology, and, and I had a question as far as when that might be available. And until it is, whether FAA will um, institute a new rule which would require manned aircraft to yield to unmanned in the meantime. Um, I, I will say that uh, right now, uh, a lot of what's being done is within line of sight, although we have two uh, unmanned aircraft. We actually hit a milestone in Alaska where uh, FAA gave approval for commercial use for the very first time um, for two unmanned aircraft and they'll be deploying here in the next few weeks for work related to, to the oil industry. These will be allowed to be used beyond the line of sight without the sense and avoid technology and it's because it's in um, very remote locations where there shouldn't be anything um, that it will need to, they'll need to avoid. So we look forward to how that, one of them will be involved in an oil spill response uh, exercise coming up, um, I believe it's next week, and another one will be doing monitoring whales, counting whales, and um, monitoring ice flows. So um, they, do, they can do good work, and, and so um, for Alaska and for the rest of the states, I, I do hope legislators will be very thoughtful in their approach and and realize this, this is a technology that's happening around the world. I don't think we really want China, Japan, and Europe to get ahead of us, and they're ahead of us right now. So. Thank you.